Alright yo, how's it going everyone? New York's here. Welcome back to another Beastorm Simulator video. I've rated every Beastorm Simulator B before, twice actually. So in this video, I will be rating every single bear, or I should probably say NPC, because not every NPC is a bear, inside a Beastorm. So yeah, make sure you tell me your thoughts on my tier list, because this is my personal opinion, so if you agree or disagree with me, tell me in the comments. Oh yeah, I also have a little piece of food stuck between my teeth, and that's really annoying, but I'm still making this video, so one like equals one F in the chat for my sanity. So yeah, I'm not gonna waste your time much longer, let's get right into it. So yeah, we're gonna start off with Bee Bear. If you do not know who Bee Bear is, he comes every Christmas to Bee Swarm, mostly to torture the early and mid-game players of the game. So yeah, just for that, I'm gonna give this bear a tier. The reason I'm choosing A tier is because I feel like over the years, Bee Bear has gotten pretty lazy. I shouldn't be calling Bee Bear lazy because Onnit made Bee Bear, but overall, Bee Bear quests, they seem like duplicates of each other, because every single time you get his quest, you either get Festive Bee and then Festive Wreath or tickets if you have both those items already. So that's why I'm putting it in A tier. It's always fun making videos on Bee Bear's quests and calling them extremely difficult, even when they're not, because anything for that good title. However, I feel like there could be a bit more effort put into Bee Bear. So that's why it's going into A tier. I'm also gonna change the name of the tier list, so let's just do- Okay, that's much better. Moving on, we have Black Bear. Black Bear is obviously going into Supreme NPC Drip Drip, mostly because Black Bear, he's the first bear you probably talk to, and the first bear any Beast Swarm player talks to. Look, I can even turn in the quest- in oh, Amazing rewards! Didn't even know I could turn this in, but hey, free loot. I don't mind. So yeah, the thing with Black Bear is, he's been here since the start. He's the OG veteran of Beast Swarm. He has been giving us quests since the very beginning, and for that, reason alone, he's going into S tier. And also, his quest lines, I'd say they're pretty good to introduce you to Beast Swarm. Because if you do his quest over and over, especially the quest lines for like Mythic Egg, Diamond Egg, Star Jellies, you learn the ins and outs of the whole entire game. And I believe it also helps you learn all the different fields around Beast Swarm, because when you first join the game, it might be a little confusing with like 20 or 30 fields that you can explore. But Black Bear talks- But Black Bear helps you sh- But Black- but Black Bear actually shows you which fields are good for grinding, which ones aren't. So uh, I believe Black Bear is a perfect example of an NPC that helps you become better at the game. So yeah, Black Bear, you're pretty drip trip. Enjoy S tier. Next, we have Brown Bear. So Brown Bear, I'm gonna put this man into C. The thing with Brown Bear is, he's also been here since the very start. I remember back in the good old days, like four or five years ago when Beast Swarm first came out, and Royal Jellies were extremely hard to get. His quests were a life savior. Whenever you could do them, you had to do them because people were spending hundreds of thousands of Robux on Royal Jelly because it was so hard to come by. So Brown Bear, Brown Bear was like a god back then, but now, considering people buy millions on top of billions of Royal Jelly easily, like, like, I have, what is that? 6.6 .6 million Royal Jelly? Brown Bear, it's, he's pretty useless. This guy who completed 1,021 Brown Bear quests would probably disagree with me, but I don't believe Brown Bear serves a big purpose inside a Beast Form, so for that reason alone, you go into C tier. Next, we got Buckle Bee. Okay, give the Buckle Bee, I'm sorry. I had to correct it, so some Beast Form nerd doesn't comment. Oh, it's actually a gift. Did Buckleby, not normal Buckleby. Yeah, shut up. Okay, anyway, Buckleby, I believe he goes into B, B tier. Okay. You know, I believe Buckleby is very similarly useless, just like Brown Bear. I mean, it's cool now when you first start out. You get those extra blue extracts, extra tickets, stingers, but once you do enough of his quests, you realize that it doesn't matter how many you do. It's never worth investing this much time into Buckleby quests, unless you are nicknamed 9999999, who has somehow completed 3000 Buckleby quests, probably with a macro. What a nerd. The only thing Buckleby quests are good for is Tide Popper. If you have enough quests to buy the endgame tool, Buckleby is your best friend. If you don't, then Buckleby is your worst enemy. I'm gonna do the same with Riley B. I feel like it's a similar situation. Both Gifted Bucko and Riley B, they got me stuck on not buying the endgame tool just because I didn't have enough quests. So I had to grind 100 Riley B quests within the span of like two weeks. So as much as I hate this man, he's pretty cool. He might give you those Gifted Diamond Eggs once in a while, but it's not an NPC that that is very important in my opinion. Next up, we got Dapper Bear. I know he's pretty cool. He's like the newest NPC bear behind Robo Bear. I didn't forget about Robo Bear. So I think this bad boy goes into A tier just like B Bear. Now look, don't get me wrong, the Dapper Bear shop and the bear itself, it's very cool. Very cool design. Oh, Diamond Egg, cool. And the quests are also pretty cool if you have the patience to do them. But in my opinion, I don't really like the whole system of Dapper Bear quests. Like personally, I feel like it's way too much grind for very little rewards. For completing the whole entire Dapper Bear quest line, I believe you get a single turpentine, which is absolutely terrible for the amount of time you have to put in. But I know a lot of people who actually complete it, and you know, it's cool. And just because he's a crowd favorite, I'm gonna put him into A tier. 
Next up, we have Gummy Bear. Now, Gummy Bear holds a special place in my heart. A place of hatred. Just because he has the second most difficult quest in the whole entire game, behind BBM. So just for that, he's going into A tier. Now, a lot of you might know Gummy Bear only for his difficult Beastmas quest, but his first appearance was actually made back in 2018. For completing his quest lines back in 2018, you could get a Gummy Bee egg. Now you get a Gummy Bee for 2.5k gumdrops. Oh, spoilers. I didn't finish the quest line back in 2018. It was way too difficult for me. But if you complete his quest line during Beastmas, you actually get the Gummy Siege, which is incredibly broken and allows White Hives to make trillions on top of quadrillions of honey. And it sh White Hives should all be banned, by the way. That's a joke. I don't discriminate. Yeah, Gummy Bear. But yeah, Gummy Bear, he's pretty useless year round. He's only good for Beastmas. Well, he's only functioning during Beastmas. Any other time of the year, he's completely useless. But for his all right rewards and for his difficult quests, you go into A tier. Next up, we got Mother Bear. Mother Bear straight into S tier. Now, whether you read her dialogue or not, which I'm sure a lot of my viewers who are younger do not have the patience to read through the dialogue. My old age of 15, personally, I don't even read the dialogue myself. I'm way too impatient to do it. But similarly to Black Bear, Mother Bear teaches you a lot about bee swarm physics. Leveling up bees is one of the most important concepts to understand in bee swarm, and how the higher the level your bee is, the better it is in fields and boosting in attack, obviously. Mother Bear explains that to you through her quest, and she also rewards you with a star treat and a star egg, which is all very useful. And that's probably one of the easier quest lines to finish. It's probably the first quest line you will finish before any other. If you do not yet have the Mother Bear star treat, please get it. It's not that difficult. But don't spend your life savings on treats trying to get it. Yeah, Mother Bear is quite poggers. Moving on, we have Panda Bear. Panda Bear beats here. Now look, Panda Bear, he's pretty cool. Especially when you first start out, he teaches you a about the fields where different mobs are in. Might help you memorize where you can get those diamond eggs and star treats from spiders and werewolves. But after a while, his quests get annoying. Especially if you want to focus on them, he doesn't have the quest that you can focus on grinding. Just because of the respawn times of some mobs that you have to defeat. I mean, his rewards are pretty good. You can get a star egg, you can get a star treat, a diamond egg too, I believe. But it's something that you complete in the background while playing. I don't think you should directly focus on this quest. So for that reason, you go into the tier panda bear. I'm Sorry. Okay, Robo Bear. Robo Bear S tier. It is a very cool mechanic that Ana added, which is the Robo Challenge, and also the Robo Party, which is not here anymore. Maybe next Beastmas, he'll add that. But as difficult as Robo Bear is, his quests are pretty cool. It's something that we have never seen before. It's an original idea, which is all I care about. All my videos are original, never stolen. The only thing that's stolen about my videos is when people steal them themselves. <clears throat> but yeah, the whole idea of Robo Bear being inside Beast Storm, I love. What I don't love is his extremely difficult quests. Beep boop, boop boop, start round one. As a blue hive, doing the Robo Challenge is nothing but pain. But the cool thing about Robo Bear is that he allows you to get one of the best bees in the whole entire game for free. If you put in enough hours and dedication, you can get the digital bee completely free to play. It only costs you all of this stuff, which might take you a month to get. But trust me, digital bee, it's worth it. And I still think if you take Beastworm seriously and you didn't buy it during Beastmas, you're stupid or incredibly smart. I don't know. Personally, I spent too much money during Beastmas. My bank account is still recovering. But yeah, point proven, Robo Bear, S tier. Science Bear. Okay, Science Bear. He has fun quests, so I'm putting him in A tier. His quests are the most random thing. He might make you use the red cannon 28 times just to turn the quest in, just like BBM or on it. But that's what makes his quest cool. It's incredibly fun to do, trust me. And the cool thing about his quests are you actually get science enhancement, which boosts your convert rate by a lot, a whole 775%. I don't have much else to say about Science Bear. He's cool. He doesn't have enough quests. And yeah, moving on. Spirit Bear. Okay, this might be controversial, but A tier. I feel like the most amount of people quit Beast Storm Simulator once to get to these Spirit Bear quest lines. The first Spirit Bear quest line might be cool. You're excited to get your first Spirit Petal, but once you get your first Spirit Petal, you realize you have to do 10 more quests, which are probably like 20 times more difficult than the first 10. And don't even get me started when you're working towards your third Spirit Petal. I personally thought after I got my Petal Wand and I donated my second Petal to the Wind Shrine, I was never gonna get the Petal Belt. Just because the quests are so stupid, dude. I mean, eventually I got it, obviously. I'm a Beast Storm trillionaire, but you lose so much motivation during Spirit Bear and that's why I believe the most amount of people quit during her quest line. So that's why she's going into A tier. But the whole concept of completing this many quests for a spirit pedal to get a really cool item, I mean, it's cool. Th 
Onnit is incredibly smart for how he makes his quest because the player retention on this game is crazy. I'd say this is probably one of the most well-made Roblox games ever. Not because of the amount of gameplay there is, which there's a lot of, but just because of how long it takes to get stuff, which makes Onnit even richer than he already is. He probably makes like $30 million a year, I'm not even kidding, if not more. So yeah, Spear Bear, A tier, moving on, Sun Bear. For all of you Beast Storm veterans from back in 2018, you know who Sun Bear is. He is going in test tier straight up because I miss Sun Bear. His first First appearance was back in April of 2018, and he actually gave you a reward of the Mondo Belt Bag. If you don't have every single Beast Storm item memorized by name, this is the Mondo Belt Bag, and you got it for completing Sun Bear's quests for free. You could also get the Beekeeper's Boots, which is also cool. If you're curious, this is what the quest looked like. It wasn't anything too difficult. You'd probably get it with enough grinding. It's something you do in the background, so you should be able to complete these quests. Unfortunately, the last appearance Sun Bear made to the Beast Storm universe was from April 2020 to May 20. 2020, and we have never seen or heard from him ever again. He's like our dads. He wants to go get the milk and never came back. Next up, we got Honeybee. Honeybee, I'm gonna put into, I don't even know, probably B tier. Honeybee is one of those NBCs that is not that useful, but it's just something that is in the game, you know? And once you turn in the Honeybee quest, and once you actually turn in the Honeybee quest, it gives you convert rate at hive boost. So yeah, times your convert rate for half an hour. And it is extremely useful for blue hives. But we all know blue hives only exist during the summer of swarm because there is nothing to do but macro. But other than that, the NPC, but other than that, the honeybee NPC, it's not that useful. Oh, and don't worry, I didn't forget about the last two NPCs. Next NPC I will be raiding is Onnit. So Onnit goes in test here. I feel like most of us can agree that when Onnit's questline first came out, if you guys played back then, it's one of those first quests that introduces us to how difficult Beast Swarm will be. Onnit's questline only offers five quests, but those five quests make a massive difference on who you are. I feel like it changes you as a person. You grow from it, you become better, and you also start losing your sanity for the first time. And that first star treat, after you get it for the first time, you feel great. You feel unstoppable after you turn in the final star journey 5. I know that's what I felt. You want to flex all your friends, even though they completed Star Journey 5 four years ago. But on it, you're a trooper. Please give the game more updates so we can make more videos. Us Beast Storm YouTubers, we're desperate. And lastly, we have Bubble Bee Man. I wish I could make a whole new tier for the BBM. The Bubble Bee Man, the most infamous NPC in all Beast Storm. You know what? I'm renaming D tier. Hell. This is what Bubble Bee Man is. If you didn't watch my unofficial supercut on the BBM quest, I recommend you should. Another video more views for me. But apart from that, BBM is nothing but torture. I can blink it out for you guys if you need me to. It took me probably 10 days of real life playtime to complete the Bubble Bee Man quest. And I'm talking grinding 5 plus hours each day. I realized how little of a life I used to have during Beastmas. Those words hurt me mentally. But hey, their words are worth it, right? I got a cool video. I opened the Mondo Robo present. I got another gifted myth gag, which I will never use. I have six, which... I don't know why. I've raided every single NPC in Beast Storm Simulator. So once more, make sure you tell me in the comments whether you like this video, or you agree with it, or you don't, or I made a terrible tier list. This is what it looks like. I feel like I've defended my opinion for every single NPC quite well. But yeah, if you disagree, please tell me in the comments. I need more comments. So whether you hate my tier list or you love it, works. it's good for me. It's a win-win situation. And I recorded this video with a piece of food stuck between my teeth. It's so annoying. And yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.